going to go through um, editing the building information model in a little bit more depth beyond geometry into a lot of the information that's embedded here. And as an introduction to this, I want to show you um, back in Open Studio here, we see our model of Worcester. And you see on the left the basic geometric um, and building information model um, entries for the model as a whole. It has the, the name of the building, the rotation, the terrain settings for winds, loads tolerance, temperature tolerance, et etc. et cetera. And you see also that there's this output down here, which we can't change, although if we change one of these, you can see that it changes down here. And, um, or maybe I'll change this, will be a little bit more obvious. It changed right there. And so what all this is, is a way for us to use our interface for input. But down here, it's confirming what that um, input is and what the output should be. And that output file is the IDF file itself. So when we save this as an IDF, um, what we're doing is saving essentially a text file with all this information in it. So if I go um, and open my finished geometry just in a text editor, you can see here that it um, generates this text file. What Open Studio is doing is generating a text file. And let me show you this so you can compare. The, um, the file itself, which you're seeing on the right in the text editor, has in it the exact same words that we saw right here. Um, so effectively, this is writing a file, which now we're opening in, in text editor. And this file is called the, the IDF file. Um, and in this file is everything about your model. So um, from the, the general building to um, the schedules to uh, materials and constructions and windows and the geometry of each building surface and um, the HVAC systems and the output variables and all these different things. And that's the whole file. It's a very, very large file, um, but actually it's just text, so it's only a few kilobytes in real, uh, in real size. So we're going to uh, use a, a program in order to edit this file because this the text itself can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, the, the program that we're going to use is called the IDF editor. And to open the IDF editor, what you should do is double click on the uh, IDF file and you should it should launch this dialog box called EP Launch, Energy Plus Launch. And what this is is basically a uh, launch site for various things you can do, including run simulations. In fact, let's run a simulation very quickly. I'm going to open that file that we've been working on. And um, actually, before we run it, well, I just want to show you. So if I click on Edit Text, it'll open in, a, in that same thing in a text editor. If I click Edit IDF, it will open the IDF file um, in the IDF editor. And this IDF editor, I'll show you um, just a quick overview of it. The um, All the different um, kind of um, available options that Energy Plus can, can do are called classes. And that's sort of a larger... Um, folder or uh, subset of, of parameters. And then uh, for each parameter, you can um, select for, oh, this is a bad example. We'll go to simulation control here. Ah, now let's go to building. So we've just been looking this at this anyway <clears throat> in Open Studio. And um, we can change all of those things right here. So if you wanted to change your building name, you could change it in the Open Studio, or you could change it right here. Um, and 
um, to make a and sorry and each one of these is called an object so you see this is obj1 that stands for object one uh, so within each class is one or more objects and generally there's some <clears throat> very useful description here um, in this pane that tells you more about that object and uh, if you have questions sometimes just clicking on uh, the side here will help you to understand what the uh, what a typical input would be, what a default input would be, etc. So you can enter text directly into the cell, or you can look at the drop-down menus here. There's usually a, a down arrow when um, well, there's always a down arrow when there's options available. In this case, you see that there's zero as a default. Um, in this one, you see that there's actually a few different choices available as a drop-down menu. So uh, that can be a, a helpful tool. Let me show you a little bit more about the interface here. Up at the top, you see that there's a series of buttons, and the, you can add objects by pressing New. You can duplicate an object using this one here. You can delete an object using this one here. Um, you can copy an object using this here and paste using that there. That's actually much more convenient or useful when you're copying between two IDF files. Um, keep in mind a few things. One is uh, there is no control Z, there's no undo command in uh, the IDF editor and I can't tell you how many times I've messed up a file because of that. So it's very very important that you save early and often and you use good version control so that you um, keep numerically advancing your file names. So just keep going right up through the number system 01, 02, 03, 04 and on up and that way you can always revert back to an earlier file if you find that you've messed something up. Um, the files are not very large so it's uh, it's easy to just uh, just keep them all for the time being at least. Another thing that's important to note is that when you delete an object, so I'm going to delete this and delete this, if I were to um, delete this guy, um, I would be missing my building information from the model, and the model would not run. So it is vitally important if you happen to be deleting things to uh, make sure that you're deleting only what you mean to delete. And um, this um, Energy Plus on the whole is relatively sensitive, it's very sensitive to um, unknown values. So for instance, if I just added a new object like this and had uh, two of these that happened to conflict with each other, then this would be real bad. Um, it will return a uh, severe error and the simulation won't go. So be very careful with uh, adding and deleting things. By and large, you won't need to add new objects because this template that I'm giving you has most of the what you'll need populated. What you'll need to do is change the values within the objects. So let me give you an overview of all of the classes. Energy Plus is a, an amazing program with almost infinite flexibility. And it works on first principles of thermodynamics, but it also has this kind of interface of, of modules that sits on top of that thermodynamic engine. And these modules uh, allow the program to be expanded. And over time, it's uh, gone through many, many versions and has gotten more and more sophisticated. And at the same time, there's some modules that just make things easier. You'll see that when we use them. Uh, but all in all, this file contains a huge number of potential classes for you to use. Now, we're not going to use the great majority of what Energy Plus has. Uh, we're going to sort of scale this back to something manageable for this eight-week class. If you press Control L like that, you can collapse the class list to just show the uh, classes that are populated. And you see on the left it says bracket 0001, that means that there's one object in the building class. If I go to 7 here, 0007 schedule type limits, it means that there's seven objects in that class. So as a thumbnail, you can kind of see 
how much uh, each of these classes are populated. 